I'm smiling because this is one of the biggest dilemmas, questions, inquiries of our times as entrepreneurs, as business people. And that is, how do we create a work-life balance? I'm smiling because it's been quite the journey for me <laughs> regarding this topic. And there's a lot of humor, a lot of intensity, a lot of challenges along my path uh, in discovering this and truly how to live this. So please, let me take some time to share with you some uh, essentials that I've learned along the way. First of all, when I started my path as an entrepreneur, I was in martial arts, I was running martial arts schools, therapy centers, hypnotherapy centers, um, shiatsu centers, which is Japanese uh, uh, type of acupressure, body work and such. This is out of the gate at around 17, 18 years old. I had no idea about balance. In fact, I didn't give a darn a shit about balance. In fact, I thought those who espoused balance in some way were old farts and fogies, that they were not going to experience uh, the passion, the excitement, the vivaciousness of life. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> but I didn't get that until a little later. I had to actually go burn out, burn out, burn out, over and over and over again. Because I had so much yang energy, as they say in the Chinese system of philosophy, there's the yin, the softer, the receptive side of our being. And then there's the yang side, the go for it, the energetic, the moving forward, the directional, the goal achievement aspect within our uh, you know, consciousness, within our driver system. And so in this driver seat that I was of accomplishment, I was deeply influenced by the, all the accomplishment gurus, Tony Robbins being one of them, but all the uh, teachings from the West about attainment, achievement, breaking through obstacles, attaining more. I was driven and I was juicing myself up with those teachings and I was having great successes. I was conquering obstacles, I was achieving great wins, and yet every time I was doing that, there was a subtle cost over here, over here. The cost could have been less time with my girlfriend at that time, my, now my wife, but at that time Suzanne, my girlfriend. And then uh, less time on my martial art training, which was at a cornerstone of my life. I was training hard, but I knew I could have gone further into it. I could have developed myself even more. There was a cost to something, my sleep. That was a big one for me. I'd keep going. I'd be wired up. I'd be studying. I'd be training. I'd be working on my business. And then what would happen is inevitably I would, I'll catch up sleep on the weekend. I'll catch up sleep on the weekend. I was burning myself out and it showed up. I, I, I would be less motivational over a period of time as a teacher, as a guide on my martial art floor. It would show up. I would just be dragging my feet some days and hoping and wishing I was at home. And then when I was at home, I was hoping I was having more energy and more time in my business. So I was always not fully where I was. And that is one of the costs. And it shows up in your life, my life, in everyone's life by being sort of fractured in many places, not being rested in the Tao, in the spirit of this very moment. So I was missing the richness of the moment I discovered. And on this path that I've been on, I saw that there was one mentor that really stood out for me very strongly. His name was Kevin Nations. And he taught me about his philosophy of the Fs. He calls them faith, family, finance, and fitness. And of course, we can expand on those to include fashion and uh, fucking. We can include philanthropy. Yes, it's a stretch, but you get the idea. So, seeing these F's, he expressed them in a way that really hit me to the core. He says, they're not, it's not about achieving balance between all of them for balance sake. It's realizing that these aspects, faith, our belief in ourself, our belief in spirit, our belief in a connectivity, our interconnectedness to all existence, faith, family, having and nurturing the bonds within our family, Finance, having wisdom and peace in our earning, in our saving, in our investing, in our spending. Um, fitness, having the vitality and the health and honoring our own bodies as the vehicle to live our lives through. That whole thing, each part was an aspect of a strong rope which is made up of these different fibers. These four strong fibers brought together strongly, woven together, create this unbreakable rope. And when I saw that, I went, ah, 
It's not about dancing around all of them to try to have this neurotic idea of balance. It's about strengthening each one, strengthening each other. And now for me, balance is not about time management, moving around, obligation, obligating myself to, oh, I got to put time on my family now. It's an obligation. Oh, I got to put time into my fitness now. More obligation, more pressure, more tension, which we have nonstop of anyways. It's about stopping the tension and recognizing that equilibrium is my power. When I bring my faith in myself as a priority and I take the time now to meditate, to do inner work on myself, to go on retreats of self-realization and self-awakening and quietude and connecting back with the source of existence, nature itself. That that faith development, cultivation, reading excellent books and trainings and developments on mastering this within myself, how I relate to the world, how I view things, shifting and up-leveling my viewpoints, my paradigms, my software. When I cultivate that faith within myself, what happens is it infuses my energy in my body. The awakening that I get from within gives me the direction and the power to say yes to my training, my health, my vitality. That health and vitality that I have, that more spring in my step, the deeper breathing that comes through cultivating my breath, my endurance that comes through exercise, that influences how I am with my family. I'm not burned out by the end of the day. I have energy, ample energy for them. I can give them my eyes, my heart connection. I can look into my uh, wife's eyes and not just say, I'll see you later. Oh, I need to rest a bit. I can just see her fresh. That connection, that fluidity, that joy that's in my family, from having the time and the yearning and the desire and having them want to be with me too, that's irreplaceable. That's a soul level joy and comfort that, that then infuses me to do greater business because I feel, wow, at home, the home fires are stoked. Now those home fires, the, the joy at my house life, at my home level of being gives me the release gives me the power to say yes I can take this power I've got at home this anchor I have of solidity I can now go into my business life and conquer the obstacles I can create the architectures I need to I can move things forward in a way that's based and grounded in joy in fluidity so you see my friends I've come to discover that balance and equilibrium is actually the road to ecstasy it's way beyond balance, as those Zen monks would say. It's way beyond the boring ideas that I had uh, at 18, 19 when I started my entrepreneurial journey. This goes way deeper than that. It's a way of spiritual life. It's a way of profound existence to be in equilibrium. And there's no arrival. There's only the play of it. You play equilibrium. So I'm inviting you and challenging you to dismantle your old views of what that could be and entertain an existence where you can actually flow in life with power, with heart, with freedom, with flow and evoke greater and greater wisdom. All my love to you.